EasyFluence version 2 has the ability to boost structures. So what we can do when we run EasyFluence So now we have a structure called CTV59 that we want to give an integrated boost to. So we change the type to a boost. You can see that this structure, this is the curve that is that represents the CTV59 structure. You can see it doesn't really hit 100. In fact, the, the min dose is 15%. So the reason is that this structure actually is a, let's go find it real quick. Let me turn the isodose lines off. So it's been contoured in a way where there's a decent chunk of the structure that's outside of the, uh, the PTV eval structure, which means it's closer than 5 millimeters to the skin. So obviously if you have a structure like this and you're trying to get full coverage, the physics just makes it impossible. So something to be careful of is that, of course, your structure is reasonable in, in terms of uh, what you can cover. Uh, obviously, it's okay to have a structure that you can't fully cover as long as you understand that if you were to type in uh, full coverage here, uh, D100% being like 100%, then you're going to blow up your uh, your plan. But in any case, let's say we want the, D, uh, the D90 on this structure to be 120%. So we can type those values in. You can say you want to do a single field, which means it's going to try to figure out which field delivers the most dose to this structure and only uh, boost that field. So I'm going to come in and press apply here. So currently, since I had an ecomp snapshot selected, you can see here, this was my snapshot. It does an ecomp boost. So an ecomp boost, you can see, has uh, the effect of increasing the fluence, uh, specifically the fluence pixels that contribute a reasonable amount of dose to the target. So that is uh, that is how the ecomp boost works. Obviously if you send the fluence back to Eclipse then it would produce a sliding window delivery that includes extra dose to this structure. In this case you can see my D90 is now 120%. Obviously, if we go to absolute dose, you can specify gray or centigrade, that is. Um, if Sometimes it might not get you quite there. If you just apply it again, it will get you there. It also creates a new snapshot every time you do it, so you can fiddle with it and then you know jump back and forth if you want to compare. And so, yeah, basically it just comes down to setting the boost type to boost for the structure you want to control the dose to, telling it how much dose you want it to get, or a max dose and whether you want a single field, and then applying that particular um, boost approach. Now, one thing to be aware of is you might be tempted to say, okay, I have my boost, I'm going to do a field and field now. You're going to get this warning if you do that, because it will be trying to generate a field and field from a fluence pattern that has a boost built into the fluence. And so it might be a better idea, if you want to boost, if you want to boost a structure with a field and field, to actually generate the field and field first and then add the boost, in which case, instead of trying to build the boost into the field and field, which might not give you great results, we can try it right here and see what happens. Um, it's going to actually add subfield, add at least one subfield, probably just one, um, in order to accomplish the boost. So you see my field and field that it produced, it's a little bit off from uh, the D90. Well, it looks like it's, it's holding on pretty good. Um, the the coverage went up a little bit. If we look at our subfields, it looks like it did about what you might expect. We have a subfield here. Th that last one has a 41 mon units to it. So it seemed to work okay. Obviously, it's only doing it from the one side because I checked the single field. So the alternative approach would be if we came back to our ecomp and generated our field and field first and then did the boost, then instead of trying to sequence the fluence pattern with the boosted intensities all, at, all in one, it's taking the initial field and field, which is trying to achieve this homogeneous dose distribution. There is this C button to clear old curves if you ever want to do that, if it's getting a little messy. And then if I now apply the boost at this point, then it's going to add a field and field uh, subfield that's going to uh, accomplish that boost. So let's uh, see how it how it changed things. So now instead of five subfields, I have six. So that is something that's maybe a side effect, um, where the the one subfield that is added is only in the the uh, part of the field that that hits the target 
or at least gives a reasonable amount of dose to the target. So yeah, slight difference. I don't know. It might actually be better to have done the field and field um, in this way. You have one less subfield potentially, but maybe that's not quite as good of a dose distribution. So in any case, uh, the point is that you have a couple options of how you can do your boost for field and field. You can either do the ecom boost and then sequence or generate the field and field, or you can generate the field and field first and then do the boost and it will add a subfield. But essentially that's all there is to the boosting process. And note that it works in both ways. It can go, you can actually remove dose from a structure if you were to, you know, give it a, a D value of a, a low value. Um, so, you know, it might be something that you could use to, to control dose a little bit.